Welcome to Be Bold Branding, where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. Today, we're talking with a serial entrepreneur, not a serial killer, a serial <laughs> entrepreneur who has built a brand serving other entrepreneurs across the globe. He hosts, too, one of the most popular business podcasts on the planet, The 10-Minute Entrepreneur. Today, we're talking about his personal brand and how that led to his success. I'm Tanya Eberhardt, founder of Brandface, and we help business stars differentiate themselves, and we do that through personal branding. And I'm Michael Carr. I'm the COO of Brandface. I was actually a client before I became a partner in the company, and we're the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe. We do Be Bold podcasts to help people just like yourself listening, take the fear out of putting yourself out there with your brand. And we've got a very, very, very special guest here today that's going to help us quantify that. His name is Sean Castrina, and he is, as I said earlier, a serial entrepreneur, having started more than 20 companies over the last 20 years, hasn't had a thing to do, right, and still yeah. seeks to launch a new venture annually. He is the author of four best-selling business books, including Eight Unbreakable Rules for Business Startup Success, The Greatest Entrepreneur in the World, World's Greatest Business Plan, and his latest book, Developing the Entrepreneur Within. Welcome to the program, Sean. Great. Great to see you, too. Yeah, good to see you again. Great to see you. When we were on your show, it was very memorable for us because we thought that you were like super bold. And we thought, you know what? We've got to capture this guy. Like, we got to bottle this guy, put him on Be Bold Branding and see what he has to say. Well. Oh, wow. I'm here. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do <laughs> I it. I love it. Yeah. Let's jump right in, man. What? Okay. Uh, Twenty different businesses. Twenty years. What's your? What was your number one inspiration to becoming an entrepreneur? Not being poor. I grew up poor. It sucks. Anybody who thinks, you know, people say, well, money isn't everything. I agree with you. It's in the top three. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know? Absolutely. Yep. Well, you can't really achieve too much without it. That's all right. I know, all I know is that's the only thing my parents fought about. Very you know, interesting. Money, money was the predicate of, of nearly every, you know, every decision, every argument. What you were doing on vacation was how much money you had. What you're going to do that weekend was how much money you had. Where were you going to go out to eat? It's based on how much money you had. Everything was based on that. You know, that was the temperature gauge in our house. What's interesting is that can either make you or break you, right? If you, yeah. because it can turn money into a negative thing in your mind, even subconsciously, or it can turn it into a positive thing. What was it that tipped the scales to turn it positive for you? I just knew you could make it. I mean, at 13, I started mowing grass, you know, mowing lawns and I had a job, but when I, something clicked really early. I remember I contracted a lawn for, it was like $3. And my friend said he'd mow it for two. That's it. That was the aha. So I let him mow it and I made a dollar to do nothing. And once I figured that, that kind of just put everything in motion, you know, down the years down the road, it, it, it grows. But I just realized that you, making money was not that hard. And number two is you did not have to do the work to make money because my dad would always work hard. You know, he was a hard worker, but that didn't necessarily mean wealth by any stretch of the imagination yeah and that's great that's that's a good quantification actually of that mm -hmm. uh you know i i grew up sort of the same way but uh, uh my dad was an entrepreneur i mean and he was uh, uh owned a car lot and uh, we grew up in the car business um but not what i would call like a long-standing entrepreneur very 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 short-sighted and uh, did, never caught on to that thought process like you just said. Hey, it clicked early on. If I can make it rain, not only do I make it rain for me and I get to make a profit, uh, I don't have to do the work. And this, and you made it rain for this other guy. So effectively, you serve two different people in that particular uh, transaction and everybody walked away happy. Yeah, and I learned that early. There's a very famous knife company and marketing thing called Cutco Knives. Everybody's probably heard of them at oh, some yes. point. They're incredible knife set. I, at one time, held their world's record. I did have this gold record. Um, when I was in graduate school, I had the most consecutive weeks. This was, God, 32 years ago. But just so you know, I worked under the Vector Marketing Group out of uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. So nobody thinks I'm making this up. So they know that's a fact. Um, and 
I, I had their record for the, you know, the best record they had. What they never realized is, is that I did a personal race to 50% commission. I worked my tail off for like six weeks to get to this, like you had to hit a certain number and your commission would start at 10% because typically only lasted like a week. You sold your mother, your grandmother, whatever you were out and they made a you know, massive override on whatever you sold. But from the beginning, I looked at it and I go, okay, wait, I, I get, if I get to this, I go from 10% to 25% to 50%. Within four weeks, I got to 50%. Then I brought in salespeople and gave them 25%, which was 15% more than they would ever get starting with the company. And I made 25, they would meet with me every Monday. I had a sales meeting at five o'clock. They'd come to my house at four o'clock. We'd go over their sales reports. I'd write, cut out, I'd advance them the money. You know, I got to have a little bit of wherewithal, but I advanced them their money. Go turn my report in, hit my thousand every week. Didn't sell a thing. And, you know, I made 25. I always knew, like, how do I position other people to do the work and for me to get the reward or the spoils? Mm -hmm. so I kind of rinsed and repeated for 30 years of that. That's it's, awesome. I love it. So what would you say is the number one thing you are known for? I, I mean, most people, well, I probably have clients think I'm an arrogant son of a gun, um, which is, you know, I have a little bit of that in me. I, I mean, I'm confident. Because I think that customers, if they would allow themselves to, they would B-I-T-C-H, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, slap you all over the place. And, and I just don't let that happen. When I get that customer that's, you know, I say, wait, stop for a second. I don't know who you're talking to. And I've done this in the last six months, probably do it about every six months, where I'll say to a customer, I, I apologize, but we have a problem. here. Okay. I'm not sure who you're talking to, but this conversation needs to change a different tone. And you're not going to tell my employees, my or any of us, what to do. So I mean, I'm definitely in your in your face. But I think realistically, the clients that know me know that Sean's going to get it done. He is he is laser focused. I mean, you want a guy to run the show? If you just stay out of his way, you just give him, you know, just let him have what you paid him to do, and leave him alone. And he, you know, he he definitely will get it done. So I'd like to think my my clients and they pay me really well to do that. Um, you know, it's like I had a roommate in town from college. I had all my roommates in for the weekend for a homecoming. And I went out to get paid to do an estimate. He's like, well, how do you get paid to do an estimate? Because everybody get like free estimates. And I was only there for like 15 minutes. And a lady like listened to every piece of advice I gave. And he goes, that is amazing. I mean, you just got paid. I said, I, I'll, I get that all, all week long. I, I, because I've created a brand to where they trust my advice to the point where they, they, before they move forward, they'd rather, hey, Sean, would you, would, would, can we have Sean just take a look at this and just kind of give us what he, what he thinks? And um, so, yeah, you know, we all know you have a brand one way or the other, good or bad, you've got right. one. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Well, you really, listen, your, your uh, telepathic abilities just keep coming out because that literally was going to be the next question I was going to ask you is like, you know, how does your personal brand story help you to build your business? And effectively, you just answered that, like, you know, because you've built that brand, you've, you've uh, systematically done that to where people trust your knowledge and what they're asking you for and you don't have to give free estimates uh no, gonna... people have to craft that i mean you to me i think you have to look at your industry and say okay what are the three things that people would like the most or would have the highest value because every industry is different mm -hmm. whatever it may be what, what's mine and what's your it, it may be different but i think one of the i think take one brand position people grab onto too much and i don't think it's a good one and it'll shock you because I hear all the time. I have a financial planner. I heard a radio commercial and they do our retirement for our company and they beat this integrity thing. But we're just, you know, integrity, integrity, integrity. I called him up on the phone. I said, Nate, I just heard your commercial. I said, it's not very good. What? What do you mean? I said, you pushed integrity, integrity, integrity. You're my financial planner. I expect that from you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to put, in other words, what are you going to go? I'm, I'm Nate. I'm a thief. I go, I go, I go, I go think about it. He, he, he was, he, I go, just think about it for a second. You're promoting a quality that I expect in my financial planner. Give me something that makes you different. Cause every one of you tell me how we're just good old family owned business. Praise Jesus. We've been doing this for 50 years and all. And I love that. And, and, and I'm a faith-based guy, but that ain't enough. 
Mm -hmm. No, no. Let me tell you how much I like, like, I love you, Sean, because what you just said warms my heart. Mm -hmm. I have preached for so many years. It's like, do not put the word trusted or integrity or anything else in your tagline or your business name, get it out because the moment you say it, no one believes it. Oh, I and love this. Brand, family owned. How do you like that one? We're just I little family it. owned. I know it drives me crazy. That We're tells me good. third generation, they're bitter anyway. They're going to be <laughs> selling it off. It tells all. me they're cheap. It just tells me I can get them for cheap. Whenever I see family owned, I'm like, okay, I just, but isn't that a brand position people grab on? They grab on to integrity, honesty, and Trusted. family owned. Family, oh, we just little family and owned business. Top customer service, right? Yeah. But here's what I say to them. You, you don't need to put those in your brand messaging. You don't need to put it as a tagline. It does not need to be in your business name. It needs to be enmeshed so deeply into your brand that you never have to say the word. You never say it. You never say it. And you live it. Right. Mm -hmm. What I do is that I, listen, I call this called, there's a part of marketing that I call stealth marketing. And I believe that you layer your marketing. Okay. I have marketing that's in your face. I do Super Bowl ads. That's in your face. You know what I mean? That's to my competition where they go, wow, they're really expensive. I want people say to me, why do you do the Super Bowl? Ad? Because I said, it eliminates one third of the people who were thinking about calling us and know they can't afford us. Mm -hmm. it, it gets one third of the people. I just say, I just, I just, they, uh, man, it's, Super it's Bowl perception. Ad, I, 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 you know, absolutely. So you, you, you know, you go with that idea, but stealth market, I said, what do you do that's subtle? Number one, I can't talk about my honesty because it's, it's not gent, but my, I let my customers do it. Right. Right. I don't tell them to, but I'll tell I, our, the number one way we roll out our TV commercials is, you know, what made you reach out to Advantage? Okay. What, what made you choose them? What was your experience like? And that's where they'll get into, wow, they just do everything they say they're going to do. Their contract was right on. They finish when they say do it. Now, they're not using the word honesty or trust, but they're they're given the trust. The same at, values. Yep. And I let them do it. Now, yep. like something we did a month ago, I, I kept driving by our office. We have a beautiful blue office, takes up an entire corner. I, I put up an American flag. Didn't say anything to anybody. I own the company. I really don't care. 25 feet. I mean, this is a monster. And it sits against the blue background of our office. It looks so good. Massive sign in front of it. I didn't say anything to anybody, but I took that picture and it'll start going in our ads. I'll never say a word. It's subtle, but we both know what it says. And I always say, if a customer doesn't like it, I don't want them as a customer anyway. Right. Yeah, exactly. But I know I'll get the older customers. I'll, I know I'll get over 60 and that's our target customer. I mean, that's probably half our, our revenue and I'll get veterans and all the rest. It's subtle. And sometimes even in building our, when I look at my brand, I look layers deep. I, I look at, okay, what is the perception that I want of me and my company? Okay. Cause I'm tied to my company. I, I represent it. And then I go, okay, I, I can't talk about my honesty. So I'll have 13 radio commercials. I have 13 radio commercials right now that rotate that say all those incredible things about me and or us. They're not allowed to say another person in a commercial. They can only say Sean, never my last name. Sh boy, Sean was good. Gosh, he, boy, he's an idea magnet, whatever. I, I, I'll i extract it because then there's this perception, 13 commercials mm -hmm. running through all the radio commercials saying, you know, reinforcing the brand. And then I do the subtle things like the American flag. And, you know, so, there, you know, there's things that you do that's very bold up front. And then you do, you know, you do some subtle, subtle things. on the back. I love dropping yeah. the last name in those testimonials because that implies friendship, a connectedness yeah. that they it's know more you personal. well enough. Uh, it's yeah. more personal. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah we, we, you know, Sean came out to our house and the advice he gave was just unbelievable. He showed us how we can save money and really reach I, all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now I was looking through, you know, a lot of your materials, some of your interviews, you actually do a monthly webinar for entrepreneurs, correct? 
I, you know, I do at times, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced, I, you know, what it is, is that I, I'm, I get paid a lot to do those things. So my, my staff is like, let's not give away so many things. They're like, <laughs> in other words, you like, they're like your podcast, you give away a lot, Sean, in that you do a mentoring issue, because I got so many people that want me to coach them or mentoring, I don't have the time to do it. So I basically do a Friday podcast where I, it's just the CEOs and startups. So I basically took that and put it on my podcast. So I do that. My, my Friday CEO edition is what she's talking about. So if you go to the 10 minute entrepreneur podcast, I, that's where I really give away all my, my goodies, yeah. all my mistakes go in that podcast. You answered, there you go. There yeah. you go. You answered my question, which yeah. was, why do you do that? You know, and now I know you, cause you can't reach everybody. It's, it, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a brand. Michael can't touch every single customer, but his agents can, but they know what he stands for. They know what each individual agent stands for because of their personal brand. You can't touch everybody, but you can teach them through one of your platforms that reaches a lot of people at once. And, and, I, and I love that. I love that you put that much into it. And I know, I know what you're saying. It's a fine line between you're already giving too much and, but I can't help everybody. And this will help enough people and bring the right people to the surface. You know, I, I totally get that. And applaud I'm always, you that. I'm always looking and I meet with my people I said what is this is just free business advice you can have a great idea but is it sustainable so I have things that I think are good but but do I have the do I have the time to sustain it I get business opportunities all the time now this is just free advice but I, I'm constantly running it through can can I sustain it do I really need another mouth to feed in the sense right. of business absolutely and, and sometimes I have to go you know what I'm gonna have to give that one away or that we're just not going to be able to go on that one. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you That's know, wise. it reminds me of something Michael said that just the other day, he said, I don't need any more on my plate, but I need a lot more plates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I loved I it because, because then yeah. you're grooming, you're, you're, you're helping other people, giving them opportunities to create those plates and take over those plates for you, you know? Yes. So you're not one man spinning eight plates. Yeah. yeah. Well, my grandpa used to yeah. say all the time, he's like, he's like, listen, son, I, I've never seen any business go out of business being too small, which is super wise, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you can control it, if you can handle it, you can be successful. And, you know, there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast and will listen to your podcast yeah. and they want to be a small company. And that's OK. If you want to be yeah. a one man shop, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. But then there's other people that want to grow something much bigger. And so sort of like in your lifestyle, I, and when, when grandpa said that, I have utmost respect for him. I'm like, OK, but I don't want that. Like, I want something bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So how do I quantify that? Still took me 20 years to figure out. Um, I can't see everything. And so you have to train well and you have to be able to trust the people that you hand it off to. Sort of like you said earlier, pick the right man for the job and leave them alone while they're doing it. Funny and you, that is the way yeah. you can scale a business and stay growing all the time. But so many people try to take on so much and they can't yeah, barely I mean, touch it. They don't have the right people in place. And then that's why it crumbles out from under them. Yeah, no, you're right. It's funny. I, again, I was riding with one of my friends this morning and I was trying to, I was working with one of my higher, you know, level employees. And I said, listen, I said, I was trying to explain it to him. I said, Joe, my job is to work with the one who can work with the five and the 10. In other words, all the people that I work with have five or 10 people underneath them. I don't work with the five and the 10. I don't work with the pod. I work with the leader of the pod. My job is to recruit pod leaders, mm -hmm. people that can run divisions of my companies, run startups. I said, that's where I put my focus. Absolutely. And I think in another interview, I found it quite interesting that you said you're one of your superpowers is yeah. hiring and retaining really good people. Love that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that I would say the one thing that I do, you know, better than anything I've done and it's given me the greatest payoff is I'm always recruiting talent. Mm -hmm. and, and it could be, I could meet someone, like somebody comes to my house and does an estimate on something on my house. And I, I'll say, wait, you know, what's your number again? And all that. And I'll, you, where'd you go to school? Or did you go to school? What's your background? You know, uh, what's your family situation? And I'll, and I'll go in and I'll, and I'll tell my wife, I, uh, I'm putting that in the get back to file and I will, I'll reach back out to people. I go, you remember when you came to my house and th they know by the size of my house that I'm different, you know, just in general, it's not like they're going to forget. <laughs> it's that guy with that ridiculously big house and all <laughs> those nice and all those nice cars. 
And, um, so I know they ain't going to forget. I do. I know they're never going to forget me. And But I'll reach back out and I go, you know, you came out here. I was really impressed with it. I'd love to just take you to lunch. And then, because I have always found, I've got ideas and opportunities, but they stink if I don't have somebody to pair it with because I don't have any more time. So I'm in that constant pursuit of finding that, what I just talked about, the one who can run the tent. I'm always looking for the one who can run the 10. I don't care about the 10 per se. I, I, I don't have time to manage 10 soldiers. I, I can't work with pawns right now. I got to find queens, bishops, and rooks. Yeah. I there like you go. That. Love that analogy. Yeah, that's a great yeah. analogy. And it's true. It is true. Yeah. And that's a great give back too, right? In, in a couple of different ways. Number one, when you find those good people that are really great at their craft, everybody else needs that really good person too, uh, because there's plenty of the not good out there. There, there. You know, there is no industry where the people are created equal. Uh, there is cream in every industry and you want, those are the ones that make and your I, life. And so I have, fun. I have found them. I just was thinking about like, I'll go to our Christmas party and I'll have so many wives come up and give me that hug and go, Hey, Hey, thank you. Thank you is because my husband made 60 and now he makes a quarter million. Mm -hmm. And I get it all the way through the evening, all the way through that hug. Thank you. Why? Because we just bought a brand new house. Like I look at the one who I just partnered with in one of my companies. And when I met him, he was driving a 2000 Ford. I didn't even know you could drive a, a car that long. Um, uh, you know, so I guess that was 21 years. Yeah. So now he drives a you know beautiful BMW and just bought a house. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can go, I remember I hired a guy for $850. Great story. Tony, gosh, I'll never forget it. And I, I met him at my office and I said, Tony, please, I want to do the next interview at my house. And there was a reason for that. I wanted him to have the all factor. And so I bring him in the foyer, you know, and it's like going and it's really big. And, I, and then I walk him out through the garage and it's, you know, Mercedes, BMW, BMW, BMW. And, and so I'm sitting in there with him and I'm like, Tony, you said you, how much do you want to make? He said, look, I, you know, being real firm, like he's negotiating with me. I've got to have a base salary, no lower than $850. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm like, I got that in change upstairs. I don't want to say that to him, but I'm like, <laughs> so, so $850 is what we need to bring you on. Yeah. If I, I, but I got to know I'm going to make it every week. I go, great. I said, Tony, listen, I'd love to give you $850. And I can give you $850. I said, but what if I gave you this oversight of two of my divisions? Because I think you're better than even what you realize. And I said, I'd like to make a bet. I'll make sure you get $850. But I'd like to get you, give you a percentage of profit. I said, I'd like to give you 15% of everything you slay. He's made $250,000 every year for the last four years. <laughs> and I always joke with him, I should have paid you that $850. Every time right. his, his oh, office is right to mine. I said, just remember that I could have had you for 850. I said, but you know, Tony, you know what I know? You wouldn't be sitting here five years later if I gave you 850. That's I right. Said, that's why I knew not to give you 850. Yep. Yeah, no, that's fantastic, really and truly, because, you know, we say it in brand face all the time, like people, I, she did it for me, that you can't read the label when you're inside the jar. And and then, it, you know, there's that other axiom, right, old Chinese proverb, it says that the, the frog in the well thinks the sky is the same diameter as the well, like that, it doesn't have any other vantage point to that yeah. one. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to pull that talent out and show them, no, this is what the sky looks like, right. yeah. then they're like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't yeah. know. Oh, right I and know, like that the, vantage points uh yeah but don't think of in our business you know the average person in our business i think i think our company within our business is makes like eighty thousand dollars and we'll do eight figures and like so that's why i like to hit them with the wow factor mm -hmm. yeah you know mm -hmm. with the wow and i tell them i go listen and the business we're in guys i don't know how to do any of it that's what i tell them i don't have to do anything my what i'm great at is getting all you all you guys handle the granular part of it I'm good at branding. And I didn't know that. I said, I will make the phone ring off the hook. Mm -hmm. And now I can, you know, talk about a branding position, how I hire so many. I'm in construction, if anybody's figuring that out. And I, own, I also own a, a, an incredible digital marketing company. That was the guy who was driving the BMW. So I own diverse companies. But in the construction company, I, I don't know how to assemble a three-piece birdhouse. But from the very beginning, my brand positioning and hiring, because you kind of have a, a brand that you kind of, the one for my employees, I'll never forget how I hired them. I said, listen, I can't do what you do. But this is the one thing every construction person fears. Two things. Two things they fear. They fear number one is that they're going to do work and not get paid for it. And number two is they're going to run out of work. Yep. Sit home in the winter. 
So mm -hmm. I'd always park my nice car in front of the office when I did the interview. So they knew I had money. And then I would always say to them, listen, I, I need you to be great at this, but you got to trust me. That phone will never stop ringing. You mm -hmm. will never sit home in the winter if you work for me. So in employees, I have a brand position with them because what, what they want Absolutely. is they don't want to know when I write a check, it's gold. Right. That check ain't bouncing. They ain't no shenanigans. And they want to know that in the wintertime, because they're also used to starving in the winter. Right. So exactly. When I'm interviewing, all things aren't equal. They, they're interviewing with five companies. And my positioning is this. You're never going to sit home. I win all coin tosses because that's the most valuable brand position within construction. Is right. your, che your check is good and you're never sitting home. Yep. Yep. And, and that goes to like know your ideal customer, right? Yeah. Because in that one situation, you've got the end customer who's receiving the products and services, but you have the people who are actually executing that on your behalf, the people yeah. you're recruiting. And that could be a slightly very, you know, area of differentiation. It almost is of, always slight. Yeah, yeah, it's slight. But at the end of the day, I want people to, you know, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, going back to brand position is my number one brand position is Sean has extraordinary follow through. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you really got down to it, I think my customers and my employees would say he's, he's wickedly smart and has extreme follow through. And you better do the same or you won't be working for him long. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic yeah. because, I mean, even going back to the early part of our conversation about never saying integrity, never saying yeah, honesty, yeah. but living all of those yeah, yeah. that li we teach our clients that, you know, you have to live this brand like this brand is you like, so it better be you it better be dialed in. That's why we look at 77 different criteria yeah. when we're building one, because it better be dialed in. It better be who you are. And in your particular case, my case in my company, same situation, my agents have got to know that I'm going to feed them. Uh, they got to know that I'm different as other brokers. I'm not just playing a numbers game where I just want to come up with, you know, 2000 agents and, yeah, yeah. you know, and 10 of them are successful. What good is that to me? I don't want that. That's not the way we are. You, you've built that brand. And now not only do your employees know, but they live that same thing. Every time they're in somebody's kitchen, bathroom, building a house, you know, painting, doing you all of those things. You, yep, you're they so know. funny because I heard a great story about the undertaker and WWE. And when he had made the decision to be the undertaker, he said, I can't be walking through a, an airport wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm the undertaker. I got to be he, the undertaker. He immediately realized I wear black. I'm not friendly in airports. I'm not, what you know, I'm not rude, but he said, I knew well, I took on this persona. Yes. It, and absolutely. I've got to be that undertaker. Elvis Presley did the same thing. When you sure. looked at Elvis, you never saw him out of character. Never. You nope. cannot find one photo of Elvis not being Elvis. I don't care what he was doing. He had sunglasses, that's, sunglasses you know, or no, right. never. There's never a photo of Elvis not being Elvis. He right. was always on time. Yeah, <laughs> on yeah. time with that he had his, yeah. yeah, he had his brand and, and obviously. Mm -hmm. He was, did. Well, well, we have five important questions that we ask okay. everybody. You've actually already answered the first one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which was what sets you apart from others who do some of the same things you do. You've answered that in multiple ways. And I love it. The second question is exactly who do you serve? Like who are your ideal customers? Our ideal customer to a, to, a, I mean, I, I say you need to be like an FBI profile. Our, Amen. Ide <laughs> our ideal customer is over typically over the age of 35 homeowner above average income. Mm -hmm. that's it you know that's the tip you know the over 35 sure. over 50 is really where we start moving into our strike zone 50 to 70 is like wow you know that's you know that that's the absolute i did a podcast one time how tiger woods made me a millionaire because golf channel golf events is my target customer mm, typically nice. not to offend anybody but even if generally if you're married and you might do it differently but generally if you're married even if the wife says, you know, I want to do this. I want to do this. I think we need to do this. We do do that. She generally bounces it off her husband. I mean, and I would bounce it off my wife. So I get them at the golf channel and they're constantly saying, well, if you're going to do that, why don't you reach out to, you know, advantage, you know, reach out to advantage. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think it's, you know, I don't know. So our, our target customer, yeah, 30, it starts at around 35 typically to own a house that would meet our criteria. But as we get older, we really hit it 
50 to 70 is like, wow, that's what we really like. What I love, I, I love about that is it, going through the golf channel, you've tapped into not only a co-decision maker, you've tapped into the influencer. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And yeah. the income, and they have the income. And the income, they, we're, you've we're dialed that in. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. what I always say, whether you like it, listen, I, and this just gets into target marketing, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't see Rolex advertising at a NASCAR event. Right. You don't Correct. Take it personal, you, but you don't. You'll see them at the U.S. Open, and you'll see them at the golf events. Mm -hmm. that's, yep. just, that's just the reality of it. They know their target, and there's. it's not like NASCAR's looking for, you know, struggling for sponsors because they got right. decals everywhere. In other words, there's do. not an event that has more sponsors than NASCAR, but you don't see Rolex. Right. And you don't see financial service companies. Yep. Because they're dialed in. But you know, if you go into your customers and a bulk of them are wearing a Rolex, yeah. then you know, you've know you picked the, the, the right area to be targeting the people you're trying to attract. And that is everything about building a brand and allowing yeah, that brand. You got to know, who you're, you gotta know who's buying your products. You got to waste a lot of money. You do. You just waste a lot of money because you're doing... In other words, if I had did every sporting event, but on a Saturday, a Sunday, I want to hit a golf event. Because yeah. if I have a choice of everything that's on Sunday and I want to run a commercial or a radio or I want to do digital ads and I own a huge digital marketing company, but my ads are micro-targeted. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And then in, uh, in that, how do you serve your customers and does that come out in your advertising? Yeah, I mean, you know, typically if you want to, we're the leader in home repairs and projects. So there you go, our tagline. There we're you the go. leader in home repairs and projects. Perfect. But it, I was going to say, but our subtle, you know, we keep going back to that subtle brand because I would say stealth. In mm -hmm. every estimate we give, we kind of say clients over 21 years has, have chosen advantage because they want a stress-free turnkey experience. That's I nice. like it. And you That's just answered not, question number four. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you which, nail number four. Yeah, which is yeah. what qualifies you to serve them because we've been doing this 21 years and here's exactly yeah. what we've done. Right. Yeah. Yep. And I hope you guys that are listening are really like tie, like tying this together because this is the difference in growing a company like Advantage and starting off with Chuck at a truck. Like this is this is how it makes a difference. Right. And then and then I'm sure you answered the question. How does that make their life better? Uh, yeah, really, with that. we're stress free. This is what yeah. I tell a client. Stress free. Exactly. Them. I go yeah. listen. Clients hire us because they don't want to stress out who's in their house. Are they, mm -hmm. are, are we going over budget? We, we, when I always tell clients, I joke with them, I said, you only got to do one thing with us. Keep your elbow iced because you're just writing checks. That's what I joke with them. That's what I joke with all my clients. Remember, you got, <laughs> they always joke. And my older clients that have been That's using great. me for years, they go, Sean, I got the elbow ready. I go, I love it. I said, love it. They, they know we're not cheap. They know we're not cheap, but they know there's not going to be any shenanigans. They ain't going to get a right. bill that they don't understand. There's nobody going to spend money they hadn't agreed to. Mm -hmm. You know, they understand. I always tell a client, we can only fight over two things and we're never going to fight over those. We're going to fight because I don't understand your expectation. I'm going to ask you questions so we know your expectation. We know what it is you want done. And number two is we're never going to fight over money because everything that involves money, you're going to have agreed to. Right. So right. That's kind of how we do business. And you hit on something really big, like one of the richest uh, mentors I've ever had in my life. Um, um, knocking on a billion. He yeah. said, you don't have to be uh, the cheapest by no means. He said, you can be the most expensive every time and people will pay you, but you oh. absolutely have to be the best yeah. period. Yeah. yeah period. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough on cheap. Cause where's your, where do you go? If somebody goes cheaper? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. I mean, you you can only run in the wrong direction. I haven't, I always tell a customer this. He told me about price. He said, all right, we got a choice here. I can give you quality. I can give you customer service. I can give you a warranty, but based on your thing, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't, you know, what, what do I, what, where do you sacrifice with? Yeah. What do you want you, me to cut I can't out. give you cheap. Yeah, what, what am I doing? <laughs> I, I can't, I can't give you quality because I can't hire really good people. Right. So I can't give you that. And how do I give you a warranty? Cause I barely made money the first time. And I start right. going through with people said, how can I give you any of these things? How mm -hmm. can I be the cheapest and give you in my field? I go, think about how can I give you those? Yep. Yeah, I, I love it. So because I'm going to give you those, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be them close. 
we're we're uh, we're Chihuly fans, Dale Chihuly fans, and the, the main reason why is because you know. He, the famous story, he goes into the goes into his art gallery right there and he hasn't sold this twelve hundred dollar piece. He's like, What's up with this? And they're like, Nobody will even look at it. He says, You got a pencil? And and he changed it to twelve thousand. Yeah. Most people would change it to 120 bucks. He added a zero and it takes, I bet we can get some respect now. I love it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, and it worked. I had a client the other day, it was too funny because I, I always tell him I joke that I'm like the Dr. Kevorkian in construction. I will hurt your feet. I will. I will kill your HGTV dream quicker than anybody. And I, I, I do. I, I, I play this game. I said, you point, you point, and I'm going to give you a dollar figure. And we'll just know whether I should walk back to my car or walk, keep walking. I said, we're going to do this really quick. And they start pointing and, and we're, I know we're on the right way. And suddenly we just agree to, you know, kind of, kind of walk away. But I mean, m- money and price, you know, you, there's a way you can go about that where people go, I want to work with, they, they truly want quality. They, yeah. they, you know, I always, I, I tell my partners, I said, listen, everybody wants to work with us just whether they can afford us. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. our brand position. It's like, mm-hmm. I mean, if they could choose anybody, I know they would choose us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and that's how we pitch, you know, our estimates. I had a client say to me, well, how can we get this price down? I said, you can hire another company. <laughs> that's exactly what I told him. He said, come on, Sean, how do we get this a little lower? I said, hire somebody else. Oh, I don't want to do that. I said, well, that's it. Yep. Yep. You got to stand your ground. No one else is going to stand it for you. I assure you. Yeah. yeah but I can tell you from being in business and in uh, residential and commercial investments. So I've dealt with construction for many, many, many years. Uh, I can tell you that I've never regretted any check that I've cut to a contractor that was stress-free, uh, that I got the product at the end exactly the way I was supposed to on time. That's never been a, pro, uh, a a check that I ever cared about signing, uh, you know. And if you sign one uh, where you don't get those things, obviously, then you got a problem. Then you don't go back there. But if you get that uh, product that you want up front, like you said, uh, there's no questions. There's uh, and you get what you've paid for. You pay for the quality all day long, all day long. And, I, and they and they call. Uh, you know, we our phone rings off the hook. We're booked out a year. Yep. Yeah, yep. So, and that's so why. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. I love it. Well, uh, well, it's time to wrap up now, Sean, okay. as much as we hate it, we'd love to have yeah. you back sometime and talk some more because I love your stories. Um, how can prospects reach you if they have questions or want to touch base? Um, yeah, Follow. Just, yeah, just, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm on, I'm on Instagram, but you could, what I would do is go to my website, seancastream.com. You can download a free book. I believe my team has the eight unbreakable rules for business startup success on there right now. And I think that's the best way. And listen to 10 minute entrepreneur podcast. It's the quickest way to learn how to start and grow a business. And we second from, that from yeah. somebody that knows how to yeah. do that. Yeah, exactly. So definitely tune into that. Yeah. Don't listen to somebody who's not successful. I, know. <laughs> I tell people all the time. I'm like, look, don't go to the brick mason to get your teeth worked on. Yeah, yeah. It blows my mind. Go to the dentist that oh, knows what there's 10 second doing. story. A guy tried to sell me stock. I'll never forget it. I said, send me over your tax returns. You can, ha- you can black out your, your social security number, send them over. He goes, why is that? I said, well, you want to help me with my finances. I want to see what you made last year. I want to see how your finances are. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't do that and we didn't do business, but that was the whole point, you know? Yep, exactly. That's exactly right. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Okay, well, Sean, thank you so much for coming on Be Bold Branding. Yes, as always. You have an amazing day. love hanging out with you. Yeah, yeah, we sure do. All right, guys, if you have questions about your brand or want to learn more about us, head to discussyourbrand.com and learn more. All right, guys, listen, it's uh, it's all about prosperity. That's why we do Be Bold Branding. Uh, that's what Brandface is about. But when we say prosperity, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about the full 360 of an abundant life that we wish for every one of y'all. We know at Brandface that prosperity favors the bold. So we say be bold, folks, just like Sean, with your brand. And especially in 2021, 2022. And thank you, Miss Tanya. Thank you, Mr. Sean, as always. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. We will see you next time on Be Bold Branding. Thrive Real Estate Education is a proud sponsor of Be Bold Branding. Thrive is the only online free continuing education school in the country. To find out if they're participating in your home state, go to alwaysfreece.com. All courses are approved and certified by the Real Estate Commission.